Welcome back to a Whiskey Wednesday. Where we discuss the internet's most important topics. Completely the most important topics. So grab a drink responsibly, sit back and enjoy what's going to be an adequate conversation. With a really good bourbon. So if you are not interested in the bourbon, don't hesitate to go down and hit the timeline thing and skip ahead to our dazzling conversation that we're gonna have today. All right, so today we have a Michter's small batch. And I've already taken a couple, I think maybe two drinks out of this. I think I smelled I've, it. I've really, I've got to the point now, and I never understood why wine people uh, decanter. Yeah. You know, like open it up and let it let it air. Like I, I, I know guys that'll like open a bottle of wine and come back to it a half a day later. Yeah, like it looks or, really or, douchey. Or a day later, I'm like, all right, dude. Whatever. All right, dude. I'm taking it a little too seriously. But I 100% get that. It smells nice, dude. The, the second drink is completely different than the first drink. It's just, it's not as harsh. Things are a little more mellowed and easy and stuff like that. So, um, so I'll actually open up a bottle when I get home. <laughs> if, it, if I have a new bottle, I'll open up a bottle and I won't come to it for... So for, for a little while later. So I'm not that like guy. neck pours as much as you like. I don't. What are they called? Just second gut rate pours. pours. <laughs> gut pours. <laughs> neck pours. Gut it's pours. Chest pours. It's a heart pour. Chest, yeah. Down here is a a butt pour. Oh, we don't do the feet. I, a foot pour. I, I I don't I don't really want to go to the rest of the body parts. All right. Well, guess we're not doing that bit. All right. So <laughs> this is the small batch. It is 91.4 proof. Woo! The flavor profile is it's pretty standard, really. It's a caramel vanilla, Smell sweet. stone fruit, which I still don't know what that is. Stone. Uh, smoky with an oak finish. So this this is a really good one. I've really enjoyed the two or three drinks that I've, I've taken out of this, and I think you're gonna like it too. But if you wanna go ahead and pour, I'm gonna give you a, just a quick history about, about Michter's. I, I love looking into the history of distilleries and and learning things from it. So it just it brings, brings more meaning to that. It's a good pour. I was right. wanting you a little blasted today because that's, it smells amazing. It's, I know you're going to like it. <laughs> so actually, I will say, uh, so I was gone on vacation two weeks ago. Dusty and his wife oh, got. I got splashed in the eye. Because <laughs> they were wearing glasses. Yeah. Dusty and his wife got Corona virus last week. Got the Rona. So we apologize for being out for a few weeks, uh, but we're back. So I'm good. Don't worry. You good? All right. You shouldn't shake. Your it turns face. out. Not a good call. All right, so a quick history on this. I'm gonna move this up front here so you guys can see this. It is founded by John Schenck in Schaeferstown, Pennsylvania in 1753. So this is pre-America yeah. being America, right? And the, it, was such, it was such a valued uh, whiskey. Now it was actually more of a rye whiskey back then. It was such a valued whiskey that George Washington himself came to the distillery and bought a bunch for his men to get them through the winter at Valley Forge. Come on, that's cool. Isn't that, you, right? Like, like, that's why I love looking at the stuff up. The, they don't the do that up. anymore. Like, when was the last time a, a distillery had a general show up and be right. like, like, hey, I need these, I need need these for all my men. I need 5,000 of these delivered to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I thought it was super cool. Uh, then... Men were men back then. It was... Uh, in the mid 1800s, it was bought by Abraham Baum, Baumberger, and it was known as Baumberger's for for a while. And then prohibition came along. Boo! Go from the president of the country, well, not yet, but soon to be president of the country, buying alcohol for his men, to oh, stuff's illegal. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. So. Then, yeah, that's what the government does. That's what the government does. The government we shouldn't get on this topic, Greg. Right? Right. We're gonna. <laughs> so prohibition comes, and they go bankrupt. And okay. after prohibition ends, they come back. Uh, it's it's handed off several times, to, you know, by several different uh, owners. Then in the 1950s, a guy named Lou Foreman uh, purchased it, Foreman. and he named it. He named Michter's. <laughs> After combining his two sons' names, which is Michael and Peter. Oh, okay. That's, so that's M I C H, and then from Michael, and then T E R from Peter comes up with Michter. 
And then again in 1989, they go bankrupt. They have money problems. It's, uh, yeah. Need some just asset they management. Know how to, just because you know how to distill doesn't mean you know how yeah. to run a business. Right. Apparently. Turns out they should have hired a CPA. Did CPAs back then? I don't know. Then in 1990s, which to me seems like yesterday. Yeah. It's when you, when the 90s. You were, you were born. I was born in the 90s. That's when the world became a better place. Yeah, I don't know about that. Around the 90s. In the 90s, it was revived by a guy named Joseph Meg Megal... Joseph. Joe. And, <laughs> and Richard Newman. Uh, and then they moved the brand to Kentucky. Newman. Newman. Is that the... I know Newman. That's a name that's... Not D. Newman. Oh, uh, never mind. Yeah. Like the... Newman, like the... Is it like salad dressing? Is Maybe that's what I'm getting it from. I'm Newman trying to figure out where I, I know that name Pretty sure it's not the same guy. At least it didn't say this in the history. The amazing if it was. It was moved to Kentucky, and yeah. then this is kind of where we are today. A couple interesting current things is they have the first woman master distiller ever in Kentucky. Oh. Because I've heard you say I, this I, before. And I was thinking about that too. I feel like... There was another one where they had a first woman distiller. There was a, yeah. Distiller. Somebody's not telling the truth. But, it's the same woman. Well, the other interesting thing as I've been doing all these is I feel like everyone says that they're the original first. Which is first funny one. because of our topic today. Right. That's hilarious. That was a really good segue. Uh, but hold on. I'm going to. And we haven't tasted it yet, but it's it. hilarious that that's the case. Mmm. Dude, I love the smell of this one because it's a very sweet smell. It comes off. I can smell. It's less of the oak, but I smell a lot of honey. When I first opened it, I smelled honey too. Yeah. This is really good. I've had the Michter's rye is excellent. That's probably one of my favorite ryes. And, uh, I, really, I like this. I really like this one. All right. I know that I give a lot of, a lot of these bourbons the same rating. But I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's good. It's a good bourbon. It's not like going to blow me away, but it's a good bourbon. I would buy this. this yeah. is, it's nice. It's really good. Is this a shelfer for you? Are you going to keep one of these on the shelf? I would. This one has actually been kind of tricky to find. What is the MSRP for? Do you know? I want to say around 50. That's like that. so perfect price. Kind of right, kind of right in the yeah. middle, smack dab in the middle. Yeah. Where, where, where you'd want it to be. Uh, yeah, the, the small batch. I say is made in 20 barrel batches, which they kind of explain in saying that they they do that because it really means they have to nail it. Because if you have one bad barrel in a batch of 20, then because they blend them all, you're, you're going to have a bad, the whole batch is going to be bad if you have one bad barrel. So it just, it makes them have to work really hard to do what they do. 20 well barrel do. batches. They also make their own barrels. I'm a little confused. Maybe I, okay, so I may have found a gap in my knowledge on how whiskey is made. Okay. Because I assume that it's made in a vat or some large container and then put into barrels. Correct. So they make one and they put it so, in 20 different barrels? Yes. So then how does one bad barrel mess up the rest because of the they, barrels? Because then they take all those 20 barrels and blend them back together and then bottle. But they were already together. They separated them to put in the barrels, and they put right. them back together. So how does that change but anything? The, the, the aging process. So they have to nail the aging process. Yeah, so each one, you know, so each barrel has to be made correctly. Okay, okay. yeah. And I made some assumptions and stuff like that. that they just took all these barrels, put them in the same room, then mixed them all together. They came from the same vat, went to the same room, and the same kind of barrels by the same barrel maker. They do. So, so really, that's just. But, but there can there there is variation barrel to barrel. And that's, okay. And, and that's okay. one of the reasons why single barrel bourbons are so kind of fun, because each barrel is going to have a slightly different flavor profile. Yeah. So Ohio recently had uh, a bullet uh, released a a Ohio barrel release, and they were single barrel. Yeah. And what was what was neat is when when you went up to buy I, I'm gonna bring that one in because it's it's really good. Um, but they had, a, they had a piece of paper with each barrel number on it, and then the flavor profile of each barrel. Yeah. So they had like ten different rows of a of, of bourbon, of bullet bourbon, uh, sitting there on the shelf, and then you could pick which barrel number and which flavor profile you wanted out of each one of those single barrels. Okay. So. But most, but most bourbons that aren't, aren't single barrel, they take all those barrels from that whole batch 
and mix them together to create one 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 flavor profile. One flavor profile. So okay, so it's, the, the it's, little it's pretty fascinating. intricacies of each barrel come together to make each. the overall flavor. Yeah. And for this one, because it's small batch, you know, maybe there's 500 of these that taste the exact same, and there's 500 of another that taste the exact same, as compared to a large batch which would be like 2,000 of them that taste yeah, exactly bunch the same. Of yeah. So yeah, or 200,000, yeah. If you get like Buffalo Trace. Okay, yeah. It's, they make that by the boat right. load and they and, and mix them all together. Now they do. So that, that was the kind of question. They still all go in individual barrels, right? Yes, and then they blend them all together. Then they blend them all to together. To create a flavor profile. But they're not using 20 barrels, they're using 200. They're using a bunch of barrels. Okay, yeah. so, that, so that's the big difference. That's the difference between, so they got a single barrel, small batch, okay. and then kind yeah. of like your regular. Yeah. Big, cool. Big batch or whatever. What's, what's the next hipster thing to do? Is it like micro barrels? Where they take one barrel sized bottle, bottle sized barrel? So they actually, like, uh, I've heard of places sell like a mini barrel, and you buy it, like, they barrel it, and then you buy it. Ah. And then you age it. And then you age it however you would like yeah. to. Which so that's the next. I kind of want to do. That's the next run. I think like, we should try I kinda that. I kind of want to buy a barrel in like 10 years. I think Here. we should try that for the show. That'd be neat. Buy a barrel, put it on the back shelf, and you guys get to see how the smoke-filled room <laughs> ages it. Maybe we'll have diesel-flavored whiskey. <laughs> well, I'd like to put it, I'd probably put it like on the shot. So, Okay, yeah, they don't have to see it in the background Bourbon every needs, time. It, it, it needs weather change to, to create the flavor profile. So okay. when I was watching the video on Mictor's website, uh, I wasn't going to throw this in, because, but no, we're talking about it. One of the reasons that Kentucky bourbon is what it is is because they have four seasons. Okay, yeah. The summers are very hot. Winters aren't crazy cold, but they get cold. Well, the fibers in the wood... Close Expand, and open, contract, and close, right? Allowing the whiskey in and out. Okay. In, in and out, okay. Yeah. And so what Michter's does is they'll actually, they will, they will kind of control that mm. temperature. Okay. And they will get more cycles. Makes sense. Yeah. Rapid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. What about this? What if we make a Neo Magmobile barrel? You take it. It goes in the bed of your truck. Okay. We build a box. Driver, well. Because we talked about the ship one. Yeah, yeah, right. Now this yeah, can just ocean. be one that's made exactly to Greg's specifications, where how he goes back and forth to work every day, and in the in the dead winter would let it age for two years. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. And then we have a little party because it's a little barrel, good couple, and we have a party, and all of our viewers are welcome to come and hang out at the Neo Mag World headquarters and try a little bit of our. So I think it'd be cool is is to get one of those good barrel. I'm gonna say I kind of want a big barrel. Big barrel. But what would be interesting is, you know, every year you pour another bottle, right? So like, so you, so, so you, a continual process of yeah, learning. So, and, the, and, yeah. then, and then you kind of get to taste what the flavor profile is. You don't like, drink the whole bottle either. You let it sit. In sure. The, yeah. I mean, that's a great idea. Wouldn't that be cool? Like each year from yeah. the same barrel, you bottle another bottle and you taste what the flavor profile is like from, from year to year. I think you can watch be, how we mess up be super horribly. Cool. <laughs> well, because eventually, it, you know, there there are some some bourbons that, you know, like that 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 will, that will release a eight year, ten year, twelve year, fifteen year, and there right. are people that don't like the fit just because it's been in there longer but doesn't necessarily to, mean doesn't it's mean it's better. Better, and everybody's yeah. palate's different. Right. So if we had our own barrel, if I had a whole barrel I of love myself, it. it would probably take me twenty yeah. years. So eventually, I'd, I would have a twenty year. I thought you say twenty weeks, twenty years. No. Yeah, we don't drink that much. Well, I, I like to drink other things too, so I'm right. not just gonna drink every drink day. That barrel. Yeah, you could drink a barrel for every every day. Have a finger of whiskey, and it would be a long time. So I'm not a couple sure. Of years. I have to have to Google. I'm not sure how many drinks are in a barrel. Uh, you know how many ounces or gallons or whatever is in a. You want to find out, or do you care? No, we'll look at that later. Because that's, I love the idea, and this might all get cut, but I love the idea of. I'm gonna stick this at the very end. Of having a barrel that we can share with our viewers that we've made and they've seen the process of it just to see our learning of that. I'm not sure about the legality of that. Cause Perfectly I, legal. Because it's not legal to distill. Well, there's a certain amount you're, you're allowed to distill. You can have too, friends right? over to your house and drink. 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know about the distilling. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I know you're only allowed to distill up to a certain amount, but I guess it shouldn't matter. Once it's been distilled and a company sells it to yeah. you, it doesn't matter if it's not been distilled or it's been dis or it's not, not aged or it's been aged. So right. I guess it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you're not like running a still in our in the yeah. bed of your truck. That would be amazing. Yeah. But you're not like running a still in the bed of your truck. You're just aging something. Yeah. It ages in so, a bottle, it sh too. It shouldn't be a problem. shouldn't yeah. be a problem. But I think it would be cool. Yeah. I think it would be really cool. All right, so we had a little segue in there. What was, what were we talking about? Our segue was, it's funky how, you know, there's 100,000 competitors of bourbon and, and, and whiskey and scotch. What makes it a competitor over a knockoff of another company? That's kind of what we were segueing. Was if, if, if we've heard this or, first master distiller, female master distiller. But it, it was, which one was the first whiskey made? I think that was the, okay. I don't think I had, yeah. So there's a segue. <laughs> so the segue. All right. So today we're going to be talking about knockoffs versus competitors. Now yeah. we are a tactical gear company. All right. We create, we invent, we right. manufacture, package, ship, market, all these things, yeah. all in house for our own products. Correct. In the tactical, mostly concealed carrier, but not always. Right. Area. So this is a very near and dear topic to my heart. Yep. Because I have seen over the years something that I had the idea for. I took the time to make with my own hands, tinker with things, take take time, R and D and all those things, make it, and then watch somebody else from across the pond, especially, take that same thing and then recreate it and make it and sell it. Yeah. Get a little more specific than across the pond. Across the pond and then a lot of land. Because it's not England doing this. No, no, no. It's not our brothers over in the, other the UK. Yeah. The west. And keep the it, other pond. <laughs> the bigger one. Over the Pacific. Yes. Yes. The yeah. Chinese. That's like what we're to... talking about. <laughs> Looking at you. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, let's first off, let's define knockoffs and competitors. Because... One thing I find interesting when we are talking, when, when I release a new product, is I, I always inevitably see comments yep. about how, now this is not for all of our products, but some of our products, they'll say this is a knockoff. Or when somebody else comes out with a product, they'll say, that's a knockoff of, of, of your product. Most of the time, it is not a knockoff. Sometimes it is if it's a Chinese knockoff, it's a Correct. recreation. All right, so yep. let's talk about knockoff. So definition of a knockoff is a copy or imitation. Yes. Right. So thanks for agreeing with that. I did. Just to, I wasn't aware. <laughs> it's got Dusty's stamp of approval. Like, yes. <laughs> Dusty agrees with the dictionary. Yep. <laughs> Webster Dusty Dictionary. It's not, it does not always does not always happen. That's correct. All right, so a let's, so let's kind of talk about this for a little bit. So a a knockoff mm -hmm. to kind of put into my terms is somebody takes the exact same design, function, look, materials, everything, and recreates the same thing. Right. Yep. That is a yeah. that is a knockoff. Yeah, and the way I see it is. When a person makes a product to sell to someone and they do it with the intentions of stealing someone's customer bases where they think that they're buying the original product and or they are stealing someone's intellectual property and the fact that they're utilizing someone's name, I think that would be considered a knockoff. So I agree, it's like it can be an exact copy, but it can also be a letter change yeah. in a name. So they're, they're, they're working on... Well, it, yeah. So I think a perfect example is like a watch. Right. right? It, everybody's seen 100%. knockoff, knockoff yeah. Rolex, you know, a yeah. Folex or whatever. It is a cheaper version <clears throat> of the uh, the real deal. Yeah. Right? Because everybody wants everybody wants a Rolex. Everybody wants the real deal. Right. Yeah. Everybody can afford it. Yep. So somebody comes out with a Folex and, and usually... Uh, uh, it, sometimes people buy it knowing that it's not, but sometimes people get ripped off. Get, get ripped off because they think it's the original Rolex, but it's actually a Folex. And I think that's why it becomes a knockoff. 
is because they're, they're riding the coattails of Rolex's branding and all the work that they put into building this brand and making customers think they're getting that, that company's product, but they're really getting some other company's product that's not near as high of quality and, and, and isn't what they're expecting. I think that's what makes it a knockoff. Yeah, I, I, carry, I carry very personally. I care very little about the intent of the person ripping sure. it off. It, to me, it is theft. Somebody stole all the work that I put into creating this product. Mm -hmm. They just took it, measured it, re you know, redrew it, right. and are remaking it. Now, yeah. I guess to give credit where it's due, they're going through the process of re of making something. Yeah, reverse they're, engineering it. They're cutting yeah. and machining and you know, all this stuff. But yeah. it, it, in, in our case, the knockoffs that exist of our products are much cheaper Chinese right. versions of it made with poorer materials. Yep. And they, yeah. And there's no, there's no increase in benefit or usability to it. Like they haven't re-engineered it and made it close to the Neomag. They made it exactly like the Neomag. Right. And so I think that's- A worse version of, uh, yeah, it, of the same it, thing. It is, yeah. It's, it's meant to deceive you into thinking it's a Neomag. That's, well, and a lot of them don't market it that way, yeah, but when you so look at it- The good thing so far for us has been nobody's marketed these other products as our products. Yeah. Now, if you search Neomag- That's right. So they're clearly marketing it. It comes up. They put in the SEO they, for it. It, it. It's in the SEO. Now, it's not titled that, but if you search for a Neomag, then it comes up. Right. And so what they've done is they went with a with seal clip or something like that instead of a tie clip. And that when you look at it, and they say it's a tie well, clip that's too. A, yeah, and that's the other problem is so, they, they list, they, they actually copy and paste our information. Taking our intellectual property. Put it in theirs yep. and say, hey, this is, this is what it is when it's truly yeah, not that. When it's truly not that. So, so that's another aspect to what makes a knockoff over a competitor. A knockoff is they're, they're misrepresenting the product, right? And they're making a copy of something so that a customer sees it as the original or perfectly like the original. Or yeah, they, they see yeah. them both side by side. And actually, this is the other thing that always really pissed me off, is they will use our photos. Literally us. My hand yeah. holding my Neomag yeah. is, yep. used to be. I think most of them have changed that now. Because of, especially on the Amazon. Yeah, yeah they've, they've changed most of those now. But for a long time, it was my hand holding my Neomag, and then they're shipping the Chinese knockoff. Yep. Yep. Of floor. so they are they are truly mi misrepresenting, misleading, yeah. and ripping off their customers because they yeah. think they're getting ours and they're not. Yeah, and now so what's the difference between that and say a company who is competing against us in the same market but not making something of the same design? All right, so definition of a competitor uh, by dictionary <laughs> they used. They, they use the same word, so I, I like they use comp uh, you know, yeah. competition. Well, okay, duh. Duh. But the one word that really stuck out in the definition is a rival. A rival. And I'll, I actually kind of like that word. Um, Be a great product name. Here, here's my definition of a competitor in our in our realm: a device that accomplishes a similar task but is made with a unique design. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so. Yeah. When, when a competitor comes out with another product that accomplishes holding a magazine in, in a pocket, we're going to use, we'll keep using the Neo Magazine yeah. example here. Somebody comes out with something that holds a magazine in a pocket, but it is not a Neo Mag knockoff. They have come up with their own design. It's normally it's elastic or Kydex made or yeah, you know, like hey, there's the, the, good good for you guys. Like that's uh, really on, uh, honestly. Yeah. When I see another product yep. come out that accomplishes a similar similar task, and I say similar because uh, it's kind of the next direction I was going to go with this. I'm trying to set up. I want to go there now. So, I yeah. I say similar because each product, and this is this is truly what this comes down to to me. Yes. With competitors, is every product has their own pros and cons. Our product is not, not the everyone. most perfect product in the whole world. Correct. Now, we've tried to make it as good as we can. We make it as good as we can. Yep. It, it does what, now I, I will say this. Yeah. 
the Neomag is the best product at doing what it does. At doing what it do. <laughs> right, so. I would agree. I truly believe the Neomag is the best mag holder for somebody who wants the most inconspicuous, well-made, mostly universal. Yeah. Uh, American made lifetime warranty. I, I think it does. Yeah, I think it does all of those things better than any of our competition. He thinks that. However, that's the important part. Now I will say. Yeah. The Neo Mag is not going to be. Yeah. The best pocket mag holder for every other person out there. That is. That's the key. That's the key right? to competition. That's the right. key to capitalism. That's why I. Yeah. When I see another competitor's product that accomplishes a similar task, but has they've come up with their own method, their own way of of doing it. Great. That's that good. is good because those yeah. there are things that I didn't do in the engineering of the Neomag. Yeah. Because they weren't that wasn't accomplishing a task that I that you wanted. wanted. Yeah. There are honestly. There's not been another competitor come out with something that I didn't think about when I came up with the Neomag. Right. I thought about all those other things. Yeah. But I didn't want to go that direction because that it didn't for accomplish. Some reason. It didn't accomplish yes. what I wanted it to do. I think a good analogy for that is there's a mountain. It's Mount Everest. Right? Just because Greg climbed Mount Everest, he didn't, by the way, but just because he did, doesn't mean the mountain is his. If someone else is willing to put in the work, they're willing to get all the gear, prep, do all the work that it is to get to the top of Mount Everest, Greg's gonna give them a high five and say, good job, you made your own product, you turned it into a business, all the other stuff. But it's not Greg's mountain, it's someone has taken the time and gone through the work to get there. And they can say, I climb Mount Everest. But when someone comes in, takes Greg's photo of him on top of Mount Everest, be like, look at me on top of Mount they Everest. Photoshop their face out. That so makes there, Greg be mad because he's gone through all this effort to make something. And I think that's the case with any business owner or anyone who's accomplished anything. You know, stolen valor is a thing in the military. Um, people say things that they don't do, and I think we all have a so general distaste for that. There is a difference between stealing and inspiration. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think when I see, honestly, a lot, it, the Neo Mag was not the first pocket mag holder. Right. There was another one uh, that was out. It didn't accomplish what I wanted it to accomplish right. in the manner that I wanted to accomplish it. What I wanted to accomplish. Words are hard. <laughs> no, it made sense. Okay. It made sense. Just, just reverse and follow it and listen to it again. So I'm like, I, I was inspired by that other product and thought, yes, I'm going to do this differently because I wanted to do something. I, wanted, I want the way that it does it to be how I want it to be done. Right. So I was inspired by it. I've seen a lot of other pocket mag holders come out afterwards, and honestly, I'm like, oh, hey, maybe I inspired those people yeah. to come up with how they want their product right. to be done. And they might have, or they may have had an origin story just like yours, where they, they're like, absolutely. man, I don't like having the mag in the bottom of my pocket. I want to come up with something. And then they're like, when they started looking, they're like, oh, this guy's making something, but it's not what I want. And that's good. Yeah, that's what happened with the Sentry Strap. Yeah, yeah. So the Sentry Strap is, is like, our next biggest, biggest product, right. and um, we weren't. The Sentry Strap wasn't the first sling staging no. strap. Ranger Bands has been around for forever, and people have been using bike tires and hair ties. And there's and tape a guy and, who makes one that's all Velcro. It's yes, like Velcro's yeah. around things, and that's and, it is and Velcro the whole way around. We looked at it. It does. It does a great job. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it does what it does. How the the originator wanted it to do it. Yeah. And I wanted something different. Yeah. And what's funny is we, we know him, yeah. and we've talked with him a few times, and what's crazy is he looks at our product like we look at his product. And that's how you know it's competition, because when he looks at his product, he goes, this is what I wanted it to do. This is how I wanted it to function. And there's things about our product that he wouldn't have on his product. And there's things about we look at, like, I don't want our product to be like that. And that's how you know it's competition, because you think what you're doing is better than what yeah, someone else is they, doing. The, the the other the other sling staging products that are out there have pros over the sentry strap. Yep. For certain people. For certain people. I'm, exactly. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give a sentry strap to somebody, and I'm gonna give one of the competitors strap to that same person. Yeah. And that person 
the pros of the century strap don't matter to them. They don't need those benefits. Right. But or maybe they the pros for us are a condiment. They're right. a they're a scout. They navigate with magnets or they navigate with compasses and they don't want a magnet close to it. Right? Just, they don't care about it breaking away. The Whatever way that, it might the, be. The, 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 the way yeah. that they set up their sling, break away, it doesn't matter. So the benefit of the century strap breaking away is of no benefit to them. So yes. the competitors that doesn't break away is going to be the best fit for them. And that's the beauty of... And that's great. That's Yeah, I think we've defined knockoff first competitor, yeah. literally in those, in those two statements there. Yeah, so yeah, I, I just... This is something that, that comes up a lot. We've released more products this year than ever before. Yeah. And I will say the Alias, to my knowledge, is the only product of its kind. The Rask is the only product right. of its kind. Yeah, the Rask was inspired by the Neomag. I think yeah. it's funny. It, it, just, it was, it was, right? cust was customer-driven. You know, yeah. People at Carrier Revolver is like, hey, you came up with the Neomag. Can you come up with something for us? Something for us. Uh, so and, and the so Alias. we do have some products that are, that are extremely original. Yeah. But... It, it, you know, somebody could even argue that the Alias, I mean, the, the, the Alias is a holster, as of right now, is a holster attachment system. Well, there's other holster attachments. Yeah. It was inspired by clips, there. right? We're like, man, and, these aren't what we want. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted something better than a clip, so it, yeah. the Alias. I, I think, overall, what we've really come to conclude here is there's a difference between inspiration and copying, and the difference between a competitor or a knockoff and a com or a knockoff and a competitor is that one is copying the other is inspired or and the inspiration could be negative too like i don't like this thing i want to fix it and so i think there's something to be said for that and that's that's kind of the whole point in this video is for us to talk about the differences now and it, it, one thing we're kind of talking about off camera uh, i would love and maybe you guys know has anybody ever knocked off something and made it better? Made it more expensive? Yeah, like, is there a shovel they, brand where it, they made like titanium? Well, I guess, as I think about that, I think that, that it has. You know, somebody sees something. It, it, all right, so, I guess if, if we go by the definition of stolen and inspired. Mm hmm Competitors. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Has, like, has, yeah, has anybody taken something, the exact same thing, recreated the exact same thing with better materials, better process? What a baller move. And more expensive. That is pretty awesome. I think that becomes a competitor because you didn't like that they used the materials they used. You didn't like that they had a certain quality level and you want to make it better. But man, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, let's say for some reason someone decides to make a Neomag out of unobtainium, whatever it might be, right? And because they want it to be bulletproof in their pocket, or AR-550. What if they make an EMAG out of AR-550? They want to be bulletproof in their pocket. Is that a competitor? Or is that a knockoff? I don't know the answer to that question, because I think it comes to them, they're like, I'm competing with us. We're like, yeah, you just knocked off our design. But there's some... There's there's some wiggle room in that, and we we, we also had another com like comment here. What if the price mm -hmm. is the issue, right? And this wasn't going to be a, this, uh, a debate. It was going to be a discussion because that's what it was. But what if what about what if I take the side of someone's like, hey, I didn't want to spend five thousand dollars on a Rolex or twenty five thousand dollars on a Rolex now that watches have gone up so much. But I don't want to spend that. But I want to have that beautiful look of a Rolex, so I made a product that's called Jenkins Watch Company, and it looks just like a Rolex. Now, I'm not riding on the back of Rolex. I'm not like using their marketing for my benefit. I've made a product that's $500 instead of $5,000. Is that a knockoff? Well, the, and, the, and watches are interesting, so I'm, I, I, I love watches. I wish I could afford to be a watch collector. I'm not. Yeah. But I'm, I'm in a couple watch groups for certain brands, and it's always interesting to see some people will, like, they're such a brand snob for that, for that brand. Yeah. They'll see another watch company make a watch that looks similar, and, the, and, and they'll start complaining. And I always want to be like, how many different ways can you take a circle with 12 dashes yep. and two or three hands? And make it different. There, there, that's there's, the hard there, part. there's only so many combinations yes. of that that you can do. Now, I, 
Same if, thing with bourbon. If, if somebody, there, there are Mariner knockoffs. Yeah. And they're all, but then there are also other watches that are inspired by the Mariner that may use the same colors, but they're not branded as Rolex. As a Rolex. And the, that's is, the thing. Yeah. So I can now afford, instead yeah. of $60,000, I can afford a $600. Yeah. Watch that I know is not a Rolex, but it looks similar. I love I appreciate the look of it. Yeah, so there's So this the the difference here between that and say a Neomag being forty dollars, fifty dollars, and a knockoff being whatever it is. What are they more, ridiculously? They keep raising their yeah. prices too. But. Yeah. Turns out inflation <laughs> still hurts. Um the the difference in, in my opinion between a watch company doing that and a, a Chinese company knocking off a product is stealing of the intellectual rights, right? Like, we have a patent on this. Is there a patent on the Mariner? Probably. Probably. Right? So, if they're infringing that patent, now they're in the wrong, in my opinion. And I don't know if that's everyone's opinion. I think and that's actually, the U.S. government's opinion. Patent stuff is a whole other comment. I've thought about getting into patent stuff, so I, I, I hold several patents and, and everything. I, the patent stuff is something I would like to get into. It's different, in, though. In, in some episode. Yeah. yeah. It so, is different. I think it's different. I think a lot of people think it's different. But if they are infringing that patent, then I think there's legal action to be taken, and I think that they're in the wrong, not just legally, but morally, right? If someone's taking the time to protect what they want, then you have a great idea to make it just a little bit cheaper or better. I think it's your duty as somebody who's a U.S. citizen, if you're a U.S. citizen, because that's how the patents work, or you're selling in the U.S. markets, you have to respect that. And that's not because, like, morally you should. It's because legally you should. And that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. Like, Unfortunately, yeah. many people don't have morals. They only, they're selfish and only care about themselves and making money. Sure. And the crazy thing about morals is two different people can have totally different morals. Yeah. So. But I thought, I, I thought this was an interesting topic. It is something that I, de I deal with comments and customers and, and stuff all the time. And again, it's, it's usually people sending a, yeah. a, 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 honestly, usually a competitor over, uh, they'll, they'll copy and paste and you know send me a picture of a of a copy and be like, look what they did. They 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 ripped you off. And I'm most time I'm like, eh. and I appreciate. There's a there's a there's a there's a level of love that's happening when they're saying that. Oh, I st I always tell them I yeah. really appreciate you looking out. I really appreciate yeah that you recognize that and that you care about our products right. our, and our company and what we stand stand for and everything like that. I, yeah. No, I, I 100% Absolutely. I'm never upset when somebody sends me those things. Um, but uh, you but don't I have usually, that same conversation. Like, yeah. Now I have this episode, I can actually copy and paste Link this episode it over and to say, them. hey, we were actually talking about this. Here's my thoughts on yeah. a knockoff versus a competitor. So, well, I thought we're probably, we never did start our timer. We're probably we're beyond, zero seconds in, so. beyond where we wanted to be. but. It's been a little while since we did this. It was good, good to drink man. with you. Yeah, it was. I'm glad to be back. This. Healthy. As, let us know the next topic that you think we should talk about. It could be anything. Yeah. Also. We cover the internet's most important topics. If you have people that you'd like to have on this show, send them our way. Like, not, not like, don't tell us, hey, have this person on. Be like, you should go on to this show. Because we like people and we'd love to have some people here. I know that I got some friends who are going to come on here soon. So that'll be a very interesting episodes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, what the kicks wants to come on. Mm. And he's willing to come here to come on. Sweet. That feels nice. Yeah. Love you, buddy. All right, guys. Thank like you him. so much for watching. Make sure that you hit the like, subscribe. Please. Leave us a comment. Tell us how much you love us. Even hate us. I don't really care. Yeah. But only do it if you... Only do you feel you earned it. I feel like we earned it. Yeah. Yeah, don't follow us just because well, we told you to. You can follow, follow us because I'm beautiful. Follow us because you love us. Yeah. And... We make beautiful content for you. And we like to ramble at the end of these things. Yeah.